Hello, Greg McMurphy one more time. Um, this is the third and final video of our series about transformer feeder sizing. Um, video two, we were in the middle or to the tail end of specifying our secondary conductors and secondary grounding. 250.30, you really just need to read through 250.30 um, if you have a grounded system, read through 250.30a. It spells through step by step all of the grounding you have to do. We've talked about the grounded conductor, the neutral, the system grounded conductor. You know, that's a conductor in the normal path of current flow. Minimum is going to be 250.66 table sizing. On a really large um, system, you may have to use the 12.5% rule. Supply side bonding jumper, 250.30 is going to size it off the same table and the same 12.5% rule. Your system bonding jumper, which is the jumper between the system grounded conductor and the grounding uh, equipment grounding conductor and the grounding electrode, can be either at the source or at the first disconnecting means. Follow whatever your specs are. If there's no specs driving you, my suggestion is put it in the panel board. It's e more easily accessible. Again, the minimum sizing will be 250.66 driven by the size of the ungrounded, the AWG or KC mill size of the ungrounded conductors for the separately derived system. Our grounding electrode conductor, on the other hand, and I have already talked about it once uh, for some reason, um, 250.30 a5 takes us to 250.66 table, and that's straight off the table. Um, once you get to the end of that table, 3 out copper is the largest you ever need. Uh, again, driven in part by what we found out about the grounding electrode system. Effectively grounded building steel and metal underground water pipe take us directly to the table, no exceptions. Has to be run, of course, protected from physical damage. Probably attached to that wall would be a better idea than running through free air like this uh, particular installation ended up. Our raceway sizing, primary and secondary raceway sizing, is pretty straightforward. There's maybe four conductors in the primary, depending on how we do our grounding, what the wiring method is. Uh, if that's the case, there's really likely two different sizes of wire, two different sizes of AWG conductor, which would uh, send us to tables four and five in chapter nine. And you can always start at table one, chapter nine for conduit fill, and it'll walk you through. And if these were all one size, then you could go right to the annexes and use the annexes. Um, be careful with the annexes. Uh, annex C for conduit fill has errors. There are some errors in there, especially in THWN. So, you know, if you can't trust them, don't use them is my theory. But uh, the rules are right there in Table 1, Chapter 9. And uh, you can always go to Table 4 and 5. Secondary side, uh, you'll have, depending on whether it's a grounded system or not, single phase or three phase, varying number of conductors, and very likely a equipment grounding conductor. And I'll just step back a minute and say that if your system bonding jumper is in the transformer, then you need to keep your path for neutral current, the white or gray wire, separate from the equipment grounding that has to take place downstream. So unless this wiring method provides good, a good grounding path, you're most likely pulling a green and a white or gray wire in that secondary raceway. And they're quite possibly different sizes uh, than the phase conductors. Quite likely different sizes than the phase conductors. Um, so again, table four and five to get your conduit fill. Watch to make sure you're in the right columns and that uh, we're using the right wiring methods. So that's really it. Check out the transformer KVA, calculate full load current, 
take a look at your grounding electrode system to make sure we know what rules apply for running our grounding electrode conductor. Investigate the rating of the panel board, if it's a main lug only panel board, or uh, the six grouped overcurrent protective devices, if it's an industrial in installation and we're allowed to use that tap rule, or in the most likely scenario where you have a main breaker or single set of fuses that we're feeding with the transformer, check out the rating of that device, both its temperature rating of its terminations and its trip rating. Then we'll calculate, start on the primary. Do the primary breaker first. That's a maximum size that you cannot exceed. And like in our scenario, if you calculate out 70 and they tell you to put it on a 50, you know what, a 50 is legal. It might trip. It might give them nuisance tripping. It would be worth telling a customer in the form of a written question, um, you know, do you really want a 50 amp breaker protecting something that could be protected at 70 and do you want to put up with nuisance tripping? Uh, but it's certainly legal under code. Um, then you're going to get some conductors. Conductors uh, with enough ampacity and protected, and here's where you can apply 250.4b, next standard size language. Also, your 250.122 equipment grounding conductor and equipment bonding jumpers. Grounding electrode conductor 250.66, and that's based on the secondary conductor size in AWG. Your secondary conductors are sized large enough that they are protected by this downstream device, and no next standard size language in that tap rule, 24021C tap rule, whether it's the 10 or 25 foot tap rule. Your equipment grounding conductor and equipment bonding jumper on the supply side of the, and that's sometimes that really is tough for people to wrap their heads on, heads around, that this separately drive system in their talk, the supply side they're talking about is the supply side of this downstream this tap rule protected set of conductors off the secondary. Um, size much like a service on the line side of a service. System bonding jumper might be in the panel board, might be in the transformer. Follow specs, follow plans. Wherever the grounding electrode is told to go by specs, that's where the system bonding jumper has to happen, or vice versa. Right? Those the bullseye for grounding. System bonding jumper, grounding electrode conductor, grounding conductor, grounding conductor all have to be at the same location. And then we're going to float, make sure the neutral and the ground are separate um, from that point on. Whether the, if the bonding jumper happens in the panel board, there will be a neutral conductor coming from the transformer and then probably a green conductor going back to ground the transformer case um, if this wiring method does not provide suitable grounding. Raceway sizing, table one, chapter nine, send you to tables four and five, unless all the conductors are the same size. Then you can use the annexes with care and then pay attention to your rounding rule. You can round up when you have all conductors the same size uh, you can actually round up at 0.8 conductors. So that pretty much wraps it up. I hope this is helpful. And please feel free to send in any comments. Check out JATC112.org. You'll find our contact information. Feel free to shoot us any questions or comments. Thank you very much.